Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hello, my wonderful friends, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing really well. Today, we are going to be discussing Wheelchair Barbie, how she was developed and came to be. A little bit of a sad secret to the original Wheelchair Barbie, and the present Wheelchair Barbie, and maybe some of her struggles that she has to face today. I'm also going to be discussing the Barbie movie, what I thought of it. I saw it yesterday, hence the pink and the bouncy hair, thanks to Daisy. Now, if that all sounds like good stuff to you, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and consider giving me a super thanks. Now, Barbie was developed by a lady named Ruth Handler, who noticed that when her daughter was playing with dolls, they tended to be baby dolls, and her daughter had to kind of be a mother and have kind of grown-up roles. And it wasn't until Ruth went on a trip to Germany that she saw these more adult-figured dolls called Bile Lily, I think. I'm probably killing that pronunciation. But she saw these dolls and she bought three back. She kind of reimagined these dolls. And that is when she developed the, what we see today, the Barbie doll. And the Barbie doll was actually named after her daughter called Barbara. Barbie made her first debut on March the 9th, 1959 at a toy fair in New York City. And the rest is history. The Barbie brand has completely exploded all over the world with video games, TV shows, and movies as well. And Barbie's enjoyed throughout the world by little girls and boys and people of all ages. It's no secret that Barbie has had her fair share of controversy over the years. But in this video, I really want to concentrate on wheelchair Barbie and her story and how she came to be what we see today. The first wheelchair Barbie made her debut in 1997. Yes, yeah, so that was quite a long time. And she was called Wheelchair Becky. Notice that she wasn't Barbie. Oh, no, 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 she couldn't be the main character. Kids started playing with her, but they noticed that her hair got caught in her wheels and she couldn't enter the dream house. So it was a little bit of a disaster. After that, she was kind of rejigged and reimagined. And then we had Share a Smile Becky, who could fit in the dream house in her head and get caught in the wheels. I would love to know at this point what you think of the name Share a Smile Becky. I don't know, it just kind of feels like when you're out and about in your wheelchair sometimes, and you might be looking a bit miserable, people will come up to you and go, mm, give us a smile, because people don't want to see a really sad disabled person, and they kind of want to cheer you up. I know, I'm probably diving a little bit too deep, but I would love to know what you think, because sometimes you guys kind of validate my feelings. But that's just like my first kind of initial thought on the name, share a smile, Becky. Just felt a bit pants. Just felt a bit pants, to be honest. Anyway, Share a Smile Becky flew off the shelves and she sold out within two weeks. Then, in 1998, we had School Photographer Becky. This one sits a little bit more comfortably with me because she has a job, she has a purpose, she has something to do, and there's a little bit more backstory around her. And I really, really like the design of this one as well. Despite being one of the most successful Barbies selling in that time, Becky was discontinued. Some say that Becky was discontinued because she didn't fit in with the other infrastructure within the Barbie world. She couldn't use the camper van, she couldn't ride the horses, she couldn't get in the car. Nothing was accessible for her. So some say that it was easier just to discontinue wheelchair Barbie and kind of like forget about her than it was to change some of the toys to make them more accessible for them. Because if a customer was going to buy a Share a Smile Becky, 
they would only buy her and none of the other components to go with it. So it didn't make sense to keep her on. This feels like a very sad, sinister kind of reflection of the real world. Still fighting for access to this day. We can't get into places. But you know, as time moves on and we shout out louder and louder, things are becoming more accessible. Just look at how far we have come in the last sort of 50 or 60 years. Of course, this theory has strongly been denied by former Vice President of Communications, Sarah Rosedale, saying that the share a smile Becky was only supposed to be a temporary line. And while we are discussing the access and not being able to kind of use the infrastructure of the other Barbie toys, there is actually a point in the movie where Barbie just floats down from the top of the dream house. You know, Barbie doesn't tend to use the stairs. She just floats down and we use it by imagination. So I really feel, especially myself, having a vivid imagination that I would have made my Barbie uh, go riding and get in the car. Uh, she could have floated everywhere. So I can see that there are some flaws in this story as well. In the year 2000, wow, what a time to be alive. We had Paralympic Barbie who is said to have inspired one of the most decorated Paralympians of our time, Hannah Cockcroft, who has a very similar story to me, except obviously I'm not a gold medalist Paralympian. <laughs> but we share the same kind of story in the fact that we hated being disabled when we were growing up. We didn't want to be associated with disability, hated our wheelchairs, hid ourselves away. But then Hannah was given a Paralympic wheelchair Barbie for her birthday and that inspired her to take up the sport. And that is why representation is so important to people within the disability community and disability representation on screen is so important. Now did you know over the last 10 years content including disabled people like me has grown by over 175% according to Grace Note video database. Nearly 70% of the 3,000 titles evaluated included disability inclusive content Content. According to the survey, television series only accounted for about 16% of disability inclusive content, which makes it clear that TV is failing to represent disability effectively, which is where a majority of viewers watch their content. Understanding authentic disability representation is so important for the wider public as it can help businesses, employers and communities better support people with disabilities in everyday life. As you know, I have been very passionate about campaigning for change and speaking up on my channel about the importance of disability representation. And it's also something you could do to push your leaders locally and nationally to do. Our community is underrepresented in TV and movies despite being the largest minority in the world, which anyone can join at any time. It's also becoming increasingly apparent that mental health challenges are on the rise, especially during and after the pandemic. Media has a powerful role in educating audiences about disabilities, both visible and non-visible. It's important that we raise awareness and speak up shining spotlights on our community. Going from zero representation to 16% today it's progress, even if it feels small. And with the thanks to social media, our voices are being heard, but we have got to keep going, which is why I'm so passionate about raising awareness on my channel. We can use our voices to raise awareness. Marker. And that's when our leaders understand and further changes need to be done for a more inclusive future. As I said, I went to see the Barbie movie last night and I, I have to say, in terms of representation, I was forewarned not to set my sights too high. During the world premiere of the Barbie movie, 
I saw that Chelsea Hill and some other Rolettes and some other American disabled influencers were invited to the world premiere of the Barbie movie in LA. There was even a wheelchair Barbie on show as well, which looked absolutely fantastic. And I know for a fact that the LA premiere hired disability consultants to make sure that the premiere was as accessible as it could be for people with disabilities. So with all that hype around wheelchair Barbie, making sure that wheelchair influencers and wheelchair personalities were invited to the LA premiere, I thought, this is it guys, this is it. We are gonna have wheelchair Barbie, she's gonna be speaking and she's gonna have a role in the Barbie movie. I even caught a glimpse of her and her amazing pink wheelchair in some of the trailers. I'm sure I'm not the only one, I'm sure you were all sat there waiting and really excited to see the disability representation in the Barbie movie. I will get onto the Barbie movie and the representation in just a second. But the reason I thought there was going to be a lot of representation was because of the inclusive fashionista dolls. The disability inclusive and very inclusive fashionista dolls first launched in 2019. And they were launched with the help of disability activist 12 year old at the time, Jordan Reeves, who I believe has a prosthetic arm, but don't quote me on that. And she helped with some consultation of the dolls. Now to date, there are many inclusive dolls. We have Wheelchair Barbie, who has different skin tones. We have Down Syndrome Barbie now. We have Prosthetic Arm and Prosthetic Leg Barbie. We have Hair Loss Barbie and Vitiligo Barbie as well, to name just a few. So there are a lot of different people, different disabilities, different conditions represented throughout the Barbie spectrum, which I think is great. And if they've put so much work and effort into this, I'm waiting to see some of these Barbies in the movie. Maybe I blinked and I missed it. <laughs> so you can see where this is going. But I only saw wheelchair Barbie. Yep, I blinked and I missed it. There was that Barbie who has a prosthetic arm. And if I missed her, I think this speaks volumes. So, uh, there I was sat in the cinema bracing myself. And you know, wheelchair Barbie was literally extra. I think one of her best moments was when she did her dance routine at the Barbie party. But I really think she could have been one of the main characters, one of Barbie's friends. She could have had some words. She didn't even get to say, hi Barbie. It is said that wheelchair Barbie only had four seconds of screen time. It's 2023 and I think disability representation deserves longer. The wheelchair character in Mean Girls, which was released nearly 20 years ago, whether she's a wheelchair user or not in real life, I'm not sure. She had more than four seconds and that was 20 years ago. I feel like this movie has failed us in terms of disability representation. Okay, there's a little bit there, but I think we have come a long way and we deserve more than to be the token representation. What do you think? Do you think Wheelchair Barbie should have had more of a role? Do you think they should have had more inclusive actors? I don't know, there could have been some actors with disabilities, but they weren't kind of mentioned. And there are a couple of other things that kind of irked me a little bit. Wheelchair Barbie that we see today, I'm not sure if she has a name actually. This is Wheels No Heels Barbie, obviously. But as you can see, Wheelchair Barbie has flat feet. So she can only wear flat shoes, which is fine for me. I can only wear flat shoes, hence why I'm called Wheels No Heels. I know that there are hundreds and thousands of people who can wear heels in their wheelchair. In the movie, stereotypical Barbie has obviously got pointed feet and her heels don't touch the floor. But then in the movie, spoiler alert, they touch the floor and that's when she kind of is introduced into the real, real world. But it's kind of shown that having flat feet in Barbie world is kind of a bit repulsive. They even sit around looking at Margot Robbie's feet retching over these flat feet. And then we've got wheelchair Barbie who's got flat feet. So 
just kind of like stood out to me doesn't bother me really honestly it doesn't it's just something that I feel is important to put into this video how do you feel about that do you think it's a bit off do you think maybe wheelchair Barbie should be able to wear heels and flats or do you think she's fine the way she is another little mistake that I have noticed on the wheelchair from wheelchair Barbie can you see can you see the mistake it's a very very tiny one but her casters are going backwards but apart from that I think this wheelchair looks great I'd love to know what you think I don't think there's an hour chair Barbie I think that would be really really good to see and um, a, a huge improvement from the share a smile Becky one positive that I picked up from the Barbie movie and I don't know if any of you picked up on this but I saw ableist language being called out I have never seen this um, in a movie before again you can correct me if I'm wrong but at one point the daughter of the one of the main characters says that she's really glad that that nut job has been arrested she then corrects her language from nut job to real world mentally challenged but person something along those words so apart from that that is all I saw of disability representation in the Barbie movie. I would love to know if you saw anything more or if I missed anything or if you want to continue a conversation in the comments. Um, I think, you know, the wheelchair Barbie that we have today looks amazing. She is a very slim build. Um, so they could kind of develop on her a little bit more. That is my video on the wheelchair Barbie. I would love to know what you think of this video, what you think of wheelchair Barbie. I think there's a wheelchair Ken as well. I think I've seen Ken. Make sure to give this video some Kennedy <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Thank you for watching. Bye!